I am delighted today to invite you to share with us a delightful hour called Something Different. And as you know, one of my steady guests has been Mr. Stanley Bowman, a photographer from Brockton. But today, we have with us, oh, I'm so happy to say, J.J. Lyons, who is the city clerk from the city of Brockton. Now, J.J., you say, he said to me, well, I'm just another city clerk. And I said, oh, no, you're not. You're a very unique person in that you've been many, many years in Brockton, and you have watched Brockton go through a growth period, a period of, of problems, and then you are beginning now to bring them out into further growth. And I'm delighted to have you with us. We know you're very busy, that you have many travels and many places you have to be, but you have uh, been kind enough to come and to Whitman and be in our studio with us. And uh, we're going to have a delightful hour, I know, talking about prominent people in Brockton who have helped Brockton grow and who are some of them still with us, who are still going to help Brockton grow and become uh, a noted city uh, as it was in the days of the shoe industry. And uh, now it's going into probably more technical uh, businesses and things as you uh, develop them in the city of Brockton. Now, uh, you're John. And John you're Jay. John J. 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 Right. Nice to be here, Dorothy. Oh, I'm so glad to have you with us. And we, we were just so pleased because I was worried. I didn't think I could ever uh, get you, but through the good offices of Stan and uh, your secretary, Diane, was delightful. Thank her for me. I most certainly uh, will. Uh, yes, yeah, she's a lovely girl, and she was so kind and helpful. And she said, "Well, I'll do my best to to arrange his schedule." So I liked that. Your father was also a J.J. J.J. with the first. <laughs> right. And he was captain in of the... the police uh, department in Brockton for a goodly number of years. Oh, was he? How many years was Oh, he, he was 40 years in the police department. Was he? My goodness. I remember as a little girl, because I lived on the corner of Lyman and Lawn Street in Brockton until I was 11. And then I moved to Whitman. So uh, many people think I'm a native Whitman. I've been here so long. But I'm not. I really came from Brockton. So you know the history of Brockton oh, as well as the history well, of Whitman. Well, I did. And of course, I went to the George's Payne School, and we were taught in those days the history of the city. You, you were not, uh, I think we've made a mistake in our educational system uh, until recently, that we have not taught the history of the town, or the history of the city, or the history of our country. I think it's important that young people get roots, and my roots went into Brockton. I was in St. Coleman's Parish, and uh, I, uh, I remember the church when it was what they called the basement church. My grandfather was the first one to be buried from the basement in St. Coleman's Church. Really? Well, that's a long time that's ago a because long time he, ago. he had uh, died long before I was born. And he was the oh. first one buried from the ba from St. Coleman's right, Church. Right, right. So you, you know that area. And then those people sacrificed. They really did. And I know my mother, even though we were not of that uh, parish, uh, helped by, she was a wonderful cook, and she would cook things for them and give it to them for their cake sales or their uh, suppers or whatever. And our family went and attended their suppers. And, things. and they raised that magnificent church that stands there today, St. Coleman's, which is a, a almost a cathedral uh, type of church. And uh, so I know that they did sacrifice because I knew the families. I went to school with the children and, you know, so. That's right. So you you're know. very familiar with the history of Brockton, but I well, find it most interesting and that you say that history is not taught in the schools today. I serve now on the Board of Trustees at the Brockton Historical Society. Good. And I served as the original chairman. I was on the Board of Trustees back years ago, a charter member of the Historical Society. But in the bicentennial year, we raised monies, and that's the one thing that we insisted upon, is that they update the history of the city of Brockton. We still have those monies in trust to bring those, the history, the old Kingman's history of Brockton up to date right. so that the children that are going to school today and in the future will know what Brockton was all about. Oh, good. I'm Dorothy glad. Brockton was a tremendous city, as you it well know. It certainly was. We'll, and we'll, I still we'll, think it is. Oh, Brockton mm -hmm. is a great city, and it will come back. Oh, yes. I'm sick of listening to all the 
negative parts about it. Brockton is a good city and it will turn around. Absolutely. Well, I can begin to see some uh, cracks in the armor, so to speak. Oh, that's right. Where, uh, they are cracks begin, will go a long way. Been, that's right. Well, once you start, it's getting started. It's very difficult. It's like making a snowball. You can make the snowball, but then you start rolling it down the hill or something, and eventually it gains and gains and gains. Programs like yours do a great deal to help well, turn I, things I, around. I, I hope so. I, I hope. That's why I was so happy when I talked with Stan about this. He said, oh, yes, I'll dig out some pictures, and yes, we'll do some things, and we will help. Because in a way, Whitman is kind of a satellite of Brockton. And I can remember when I was a little girl, I could ride the trolley car to, um, I think it was Hancock Street, and for a nickel. I could get on and ride. I used to love to do that. That was my big thing, get on the trolley car and ride. And you had to pay another nickel, though, to go down into the center of Whitman. So I didn't get to the center of Whitman, although I had an aunt that lived here. So once in a while, I'd get the other nickel to get into the center, and then I'd have to walk the rest of the way. But you know, these were the days when lots of nice things went on, and people were helpful. Stanley and even remembers the horse-drawn cars. <laughs> <laughs> I, knew, I knew you'd get a dig <laughs> in somewhere. There's nobody that knows more about I, Stanley I wasn't around when the nickel rides were on the trolley. No, so. he's much younger than I me. am. Thank I you. Thought I thought that I thought Stanley was around when they laid the cornerstone of City Hall. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> In well, fact, you, well, I, I shouldn't say anything. I'm going to give a few digs to uh, Oh, to JJ you're going to get yours in. Uh, you you're bet. Get your rejoinder. Okay, because I know the listening and viewing public love this. They love yeah. the give oh, and take. Absolutely. And they enjoy yeah, they uh, talking. Well, I'm not going to hold back the horses if they go back <laughs> as far as the old days go. Well, you're a native Brocktonian. That Therefore, your roots are there. You loved it. Your family was a well-known family. Did a lot for the city of Brockton. Uh, you attended St. Patrick's Parochial School. I remember school, when right. that was up opposite, about where the library is now. Yeah, up on Bartlett uh, Street. Uh, Bartlett I, lived Street. On I lived up on another block up at the corner of Bartlett and Chester Avenue. Uh -huh. And of course, the good sisters well, the, kept you in line. Although well, you had to be in line in those days. <laughs> well, when I was a little girl, I uh, could speak both French and um, uh, English. So uh, they, my mother got permission for me to leave the Kingman School. You remember Kingman's history? Yes, well, I do. the King, Kingman's I went, history. And I used to leave, and I used to go to the uh, Sacred, Sacred Heart. Ha Sacred Heart. Mm -hmm. And there I was down there enjoying. So I learned to respect the sisters. I mean, I know they were strict. I know they were uh, wanted you so much to be almost perfect that sometimes as a I had a great deal of difficulty rebelled <laughs> 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 but anyway. I will say though Dorothy when he was young he was very slender yes he, went, he was in the Marines yes and he also was very very shy and he didn't talk he was very uh, as as I didn't I was afraid of older people when I was younger and uh, you I, too I don't, I don't ever yeah. recall being afraid of anybody well <laughs> yeah I know but you were very quiet in those days I, I when I took pictures father. of you in the presence of your father you didn't say a word well, that's hard to believe well I believe it I remember it I was there <laughs> well probably your dad uh, knowing him although I have uh, one uh, memory of your dad when he was very kind and he did a very kind thing with a family that had got into a, a bind and it was a domestic uh, dispute but instead of making it a big deal he got them to well we would call them counselors today to their uh, reconciliation yeah uh, yeah and a reconciliation was made and the family has gone on to of very good things. That's and, great. We're and always so, happy to hear things so like that. So you see, your father had uh, a side to him that was not all police and, uh, you know, I'm going to... Well, the police, the police in those days were altogether different than they are today. Oh, I can remember that, and I can remember we had two pear trees in our yard, and the policeman, we, I looked forward to him coming because he'd climb the pear tree and shake it, you know, and we'd get the pears, and, and then... They wouldn't you know, do it was it a, today. Oh, well, guess <laughs> not. Well, they could be sued for, <laughs> you know, yeah. sad. It's sad. The laws have changed. Oh, Oh, yes, and attitudes have changed, mm -hmm. but we're going to change those attitudes back again. Well, you went to a BU, and you went to Syracuse University. You had graduated from Brockton High School, and uh, then you went into the insurance business. I, I had an insurance office down on Main Street, 654 Main Street, down opposite Dahlberg's funeral home. Uh, yeah, and uh, you did well with that, and then you went to North Conway. I, was, and, well, I had no partner. Stanley remembers yes, him well, Henry yes. Gill, a very yes. prominent oh. attorney in the city of Brockton. Yes. Henry and I were partners, and we bought uh, a motor lodge up in North Conway and had a great time up there for a few years. Then yeah. we bought a mountain 
And we bought a lodge and developed the land up there and did well. Oh, we did uh, very, very uh, successful we were in North Conway. Maybe, Dorothy, you can get some pointers. Yes. Uh, for your yeah. land in Maine, which we <laughs> talked about. My trust, yes. which I can't. There is a land in Maine, Dorothy. I, I have, had land in Maine. I also. have some uh, land in Maine outside of Waldo. And uh, it's in trust. I, I was telling Stanley because he said, "Well, now let's get let's get going here and develop this land." But unfortunately, I have other people who are involved in, in that. So, so you have to, you know, it has to be yes, not but just eighty acres, JJ. <laughs> I, had, I think at one time I had sixty acres over in Porter, Maine, over on the uh, Ossipi River. Oh, oh yes. Well, that's inland. Yeah, that more. is inland. Yes, that's that's, right. that's inland. I'm sort of over, out of Belfast. Oh, okay, you know, you're way yeah. off. Yes. Okay. Now you also went on to a state committee. I, that's uh, right. I was uh, elected one of the youngest members ever elected to the Democratic State Committee back in 19 what 54. Yeah. Right. Uh, uh, my goodness. And uh, I suppose that there you had to be a little bit shy at first. I was never shy. <laughs> you, you let them know that you were around. <laughs> they right? knew I I'm still disputing that. <laughs> they I... knew I had arrived. <laughs> oh dear, 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 dear. Well, uh, you you had all kinds of honors and you belong to uh, all kinds of boards. Uh, perhaps you could uh, fill us in a little bit. I have a resume here. My goodness, it goes on like, uh, I don't know what. You were chairman of the Brockton District Massachusetts Bicentennial Commission yes. and did to, to help a lot. That did help a lot, didn't it, to bring back Brockton? Oh, absolutely. Uh, it, was a, yeah. it was a very, very interesting. That's why we raised the money and have the monies now from the centennial of Brockton also right. uh, for the history of Brockton. Mm -hmm. well, we're referring to the bicentennial. I was also the chairman of the bicentennial right. in 76. Yes, yes. And in 75, you were the first city clerk in Massachusetts to receive the Certified Municipal Clerks Award. Yes, now, I, th there are many city clerks now, and most of the town clerks were certified, but I was the first city clerk in Massachusetts to go on and become certified. I've been a member of the International Clerks for a long time, served in many offices there, and served as their parliamentarian, belonged to the National Association of Parliamentarians, served as the parliamentarian in Hawaii at their convention, and also in Kansas City at their oh, convention. Oh, my goodness, you You're did. You're dealing uh, with a VIP here. Uh, uh, we, un we understand that. Uh, I'm so trying to bring it out to my audience. I feel audience. very humble myself. Well, well, never be humble, my don't friend. Don't <laughs> never be humble. <laughs> don't uh, say that, Jay. <laughs> oh, dear. You served as a military aide to the former uh, Edward King, whom we all uh, really respected. He was a, 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 an excellent, a, a, governor. A, a, excellent governor. You're a member of the Ancient and Honorable Artillery Company and Chairman of the Finance Committee. Oh, That's the right. second oldest military uh, organization. Yes, and you should have worn your uniform <laughs> here today. Well, I don't you. know. Very imposing, your re you. resume goes <laughs> on and on and on, and you, you've just been cited by the National AMVETS Association in recognition of your numerous contributions to the well-being of the AMVETS veteran group, and I know what you're doing now to help with the support support groups and, and we, fir we uh, firmly believe in the support of our troops oh absolutely mm -hmm. i mean i just i just felt so bad i didn't want a ground war because of the casualties but that we're holding to a very minimal uh, every life is precious mm -hmm. and i just feel for those parents who have to have people come to their door but you know what we have to have a strong commitment we, we have to the president well, is doing a tremendous job he's trying hard to to uh, to make this man not a martyr, but make him what he was, an obsessed man for power. Now, I don't want to take any more time. Uh, Stan, we know. I've, I've given a lot about Stan. You know he's a noted photographer. He's been so patient and giving of his time and his I talent. Pale, I pale beside JJ. That's I'm, not, not at all. Uh, no, <laughs> I, you know, it takes everybody to make a team, and that's, yeah, that's what we true. are. We're, we're a team. We're a good team. That's, good I team. can see. One of the I great things, I want to interrupt you a minute. One of well, the great things on every guy. Saturday, on every Saturday evening's enterprise, yeah. you see the pictures of 30 years ago. Yeah. I think that's one of the it, greatest things that they have in the local newspaper. Isn't that great? Yeah. It is. It's, it's that, really yes. nice. I'm gonna Former get, Brockton. I'm going to get one of you one of these days. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Now. I always admired JJ because he had a sonorous tone and was always stentorian. I'm using these words because you're, you're so erudite yourself. See what I mean? <laughs> And, you oh. know, Dorothy, we have to out-talk him. <laughs> I know, I, I know. When he gets going, yeah. No, no, he's the one. Oh, I know. Well, I'm Maybe good. we should show some of these pictures yes, I instead. Think, I, think so. I think it's getting I think to be it's, very dull. I, oh, really. I don't think oh, don't it's don't you dull at all. I think we're all having a... Even oh, I the think the camera is. crew is yeah. laughing. You know, when I kind of go by them. If they, if they smile and look yeah, as though they're half asleep... I can't see them. Like, they're out there somewhere. Yeah. They're, they're, they're out there. Where are your glasses? Okay. All right, Stan, go ahead. Well... 
I, I just want to say, you know, after all, we wouldn't be here if it weren't for Continental Cable, and this was the first time, this was the time when Continental Cable built its Brockton studio and its Brockton office, and we have a number of very prominent Brocktonians who were there at the time. There's. Uh, uh, JJ, I'm sorry, you went there, were no, you? No, I know. <laughs> a a tremendous, use, you I'm going to take the, no, no, no. That's a terrible omission. Here you are telling how great he is, and he wasn't even in this picture with prominent Brocktonians. I don't understand well, it. I think we should go on to the next one. I imagine. Now, if the truth will know, you probably... That was interesting, though. You have uh, two former mayors in that picture. Is that so? Uh, former Mayor Studensky and former Mayor Crosby. Mm -hmm. yeah, I can see a yeah. couple of members of the city council, Mary Buckley uh, and Joe Joseph. Wow. Yeah. And, no, the, and the present mayor, Carl Pataro, was behind Joe yeah, Joseph. Yeah, that's oh, right. That's so before then he gained we, all the weight. We're killing a lot of birds with one stone. Oh, that's, that's pretty wonderful. good. You know, I, in fairness to you, J.J., I think you probably were on a junket somewhere trying I'm to... I'm sure he was. <laughs> he was in Hawaii. He was that time. when I was there. <laughs> <laughs> was, I think he was on a junket. That's, but, that's but, the but, greatest but, thing but, you can but, say. Buda Russ. I wouldn't dare to say... I wouldn't dare to say that. Uh, this, a business joke. This, this, yes, of course. This is one of the early mayors, Larry Crowley, in, uh, who, who was mayor in 1938. And he is introducing FDR when FDR visited oh, Brockton. Yes. And uh, as you can see in the background, the man with the hat is uh, FDR's son. That's James Roosevelt, who is now an older. Is he still living? I, I don't, don't know that he's still alive. I don't know. But uh, you notice that uh, today uh, the press covers everything about the president. If he, if he has a, a sneeze, they, it, it's covered. In those days, FDR, Franklin D. Roosevelt, had, of course, was unable to, to walk. He had yes. uh, infantile. And he always was shown seated, in this case, in the car. And uh, people didn't realize that he was a handicapped person. No, a lot of people but did not. No, that's right. They absolutely, didn't. never mm -hmm. realized it. And yeah. because he would, he would control the, the cameras and the press in such a way that they would always be favorable to show him in the best light. But at that time, of course, Brockton was, as you said, a shoe industry and a great industry. And at that time, uh, the audience that came to see uh, FDR at that time comprised shoe people mainly union people. And if you notice the signs in the background, they say the union supports Franklin D. Roosevelt. And there was skivers and stitches and vampers, no, not vamps, but vampers. Vampers, <laughs> vampers and uh, cutters, you know. Yeah. From the Brotherhood of Shoe and Allied yeah. That's Russia, right. The boot and, and they, shoe workers union. The boot, well, days. the boot and shoe workers union was the first union, and they, the uh, workers were dissatisfied with that. And uh, eventually the Brotherhood uh, came about, and in fact, the Brotherhood Credit Union. Which I'm a the board of directors. Oh, is that so? I've been there That's, for 20 years. You didn't say that in oh. your no, resume. Well, no, I want him to tell. When I oh, you want him to tell us? Tell us something. He, he I, won't hesitate. I didn't <laughs> want it to appear that I was flattering him. Oh, and darling, trying you to do a great job. Flattery <laughs> will get you everywhere. Yeah, I think that he's, I think you're doing a fine job. I can flatter him. I did say it when I. <laughs> When I said he had the stentorian voice, that was flattery, but nobody knows what it means. So, so <laughs> Just they question. do, it means it's a very loud, loud. clear... What about sonorous? Yes, it has, a, has well a yes, it has a caliber. It has a caliber to it. That's right. You must have, you Remember, know Stanley, you're talking sound. to a school mom. Yes, I, and, and how. What are the, and there aren't school moms like that no. today. <laughs> We'd be much better off if there were. Absolutely. Much, now, much we shouldn't better talk off. about pictures. We no, should we talk, talk about, about that. Right. Get, get going, oh, here, fellas. Get so? going. <laughs> now, see, that's a school mom in her. She said, get, get moving. Now, Stanley, when you, yeah. you, when you mentioned uh, the former Mayor Crowley, yeah. he was one of the few mayors, other than uh, Mayor Studensky, yeah. who, after having served as mayor, came back and served as chairman of the school committee for many years oh, until yeah. the time of his that's death. Right. Larry yeah. Crowley served uh, as a distinguished uh, school committee member yes. Yes. after yes. having served as mayor. And yeah. the only other mayor that I remember is Paul Studensky, who has come back and served in the council. Mm. Yeah. That's, that's true. Yeah. That's, yeah. But in those days, too, there was a great deal of commitment to sports. And the Enterprise, the newspaper, sponsored a, an annual t trip to Boston to the Red Sox. And there were as many as 40 or 50 buses that were contributed by various uh, businesses. They had a parade, the buses lined up on Main Street, and the whole 4,000 kids went into Boston. And I, oh, that I a as a young fun. person, I was one of the monitors on these buses. And uh -oh. the kids uh, in those days, 
didn't behave any better in some instances oh, than they I'm do sure today. And of course, I being an easy mark, they, uh, they took advantage of it. That was a great thing, though, the uh, oh, Jimmy yes. Burke uh, bus trip That's to, Boston, to the ball games. Mm -hmm. That's one of the sorry things today, that children can't afford to go to ball games no. because of the high price wow, so. uh, of admission to a ball field. Well, the whole no. section of, uh, of Fenway Park was devoted to these 4,000 kids right. that went in Right, a great thing to do for those kids. And, and the remarkable thing was, though, they did it every year. There were never in, that I heard of well, any accidents. Now, who subsidized that? Well, the various a, merchants, the, oh, right. the oh, Enterprise they, was a sponsor, but various uh, and sundry merchants. merchants sponsored the buses. That's it. And I can recall mm -hmm. the buses uh, corralling over at Edgar, Edgar's That's playground right. yeah. before mm -hmm. they came up that way and before they came to the Didn't downtown. Didn't you go as a child and those things? Oh, I, I very well. My grandmother lived at the, right opposite the Edgar's playground, no, so I well remember that. You must have six years old at the time. Oh, so. maybe. Uh, I don't know that I was born. <laughs> My memory <laughs> is can, great. How can it be that I'm that much <laughs> older than you? That's impossible. That's impossible. Uh, You've worn well, kid. Thank <laughs> you. Aren't you nice to say that? Anyway, uh, what I'm, oh, we got to get going. Oh. I, I don't want any blank spaces here. That's this is uh, Peter's Lunch, which is a gathering place for all the politicians and the leaders of, of Brockton. Uh, it's the sign that, uh, where does it say Peter's, Peter's Lunch? Peter's Home Lunch. Yeah, right. Peter's I, Home. Oh, you can read I that. I can read that. And next how? door there, my friend, my barber for a goodly number of years was Frank Yamano's barber shop was yeah. next door there. Yeah. Uh, and the wooded uh, frame shop was that's on the other right. side. That's right, they sold pictures. The New York Cafe was also, that's when, when the downtown Brockton was great. That's it, even though it doesn't look now, great. You know about Peter's Restaurant, that's where Christo started. I was going to yeah. tell you that. All right, Christo's, un not... Christo's uncle, Angelo, was the one, Angelo Pachillis was the one who ran Peter's Lunch, and they made the best pie and the best stew. Yes. Angelo was and, a great pie maker. And Peter, oh, I didn't know that. Oh, uh, but Peter anyway. Fantasy. Anyway, Jimmy oh yes, Jimmy. Pan anyway, uh, Peter was, I mean, uh, Chris was brought down from Canada, or came down from Canada and started working there, and he scrubbed floors, and he worked mm -hmm. in the kitchen, mm -hmm. and now he's quite famous as the owner of Christo's Restaurant, and here he is with another famous uh, area person, the Reverend Bartley McFadden, who is the uh, president of Stonehill College, and you know, I have maybe two or three hundred pictures of Father McFadden and uh, two or three hundred pictures of Chris. And uh, altogether there's about ten or twelve thousand pictures a year and eventually they're going to, when I die or when I... Uh, well, when I, you go on to your reward. Thank you. Well, I uh, It'd be a long time yet. He comes from a long life family. Uh, I remember when Stanley's mother, Stan, your mother lived to be over 90, right, didn't 93. she? 93. Sure. Oh, well, Stanley would be around for a long time. Thank oh, you very I'm glad. much. In fact, that, that uh, Stanley back. was very good to his mother. I remember well, that, too. Thank that's, you. That's well, thank good. you. That's very nice. I we'll do. get on to another subject. <laughs> this is, this is uh, the late uh, Rufus Carr, who was city forester in Brockton for a long time. And he is responsible for all the trees, all the big trees on Moss Avenue and Winifred Road and all those things. That was a big job, you know, years oh, ago, the well, city of forest. of course, but you, oh, it was a big I, job. That was an important And position. he was highly respected. He was uh, uh, president of the Brockton Audubon Society, which at that time uh, seemed to have among its uh, members many leaders, these society people, sure, you know. Yeah, I remember right. one in particular, I love the sound of her name, Mrs. Merton L.C. McCrillis. Uh -huh. And she acted the part, 100 percent. And Rufus uh, was uh, interested in birds and in uh, wildlife, and he uh, established, uh, the society established this sanctuary in Brockton, which is still in Brockton. You didn't know that. No, I didn't know but that. But not active. It's in back of the uh, Hancock School. The Hancock? Oh, yeah, all right. I, you know? Yes, it's about oh, the yeah. only place where there could be a well, that's sanctuary right. going um, into the eastern line. That's right. And it's still there. and. Uh, Nothing has come of the land except it's grown. There's probably more well, birds there than there the, were there. The, absolutely, because yeah, you see, it's not somewhere. being disturbed. Yeah, right, you have right. to. Well, that's right. Well, in keeping with today's right. policies you need of the uh, green belt. environmental absolutely protection. Absolutely, we do. Mm -hmm. But going back again, we're going not, this isn't the Civil War, although it looks like it. These are the last two veterans oh, of, the Civil yes. War. of the Civil War in Brockton. Comrade Bunker on the uh -huh. left. And, I'm mean, sorry, Comrade Windsor on the left and Comrade Bunker on the right. Now they were called, they were not communists, you know. That was the That was the title to the Civil That's War. Right. 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 Yes. right, right. And over on the left is that great uh, Brocktonian, uh, Major Mike Michael Caffrey. Caffrey. You, you know, you, oh, I know Mike very He well. stood very straight. He was the epitome of uh, army, of a, what an army officer should be. And behind him is John Helen, and also a veteran. 
And of course, Mike, well, I think, went back to World War I. Yeah. Oh, yes, uh, they all went back. So did John Howland. You know, years ago, yeah. one World of the World. things they did was they brought these gentlemen down to George's Pain School, right. and I acted as their hostess and got them drinks and not drink of water. Drinks. Drink of water. Dark, and I you, know it. You astound me every time I we get together. I had a wonderful time, yeah. and I can With remember. With the drinks, you should have. <laughs> you know, they, never served, they never served alcohol in the elementary schools. No, in no, right no never, never, no, never, and, never. And but never. I can remember it was my duty to see that they were comfortable, had a good chair to sit in, and yeah. then. Uh, Who was this that had to sit in this chair? This, the GI the, 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 the oh, veterans, yeah, and there were the last two, mm -hmm. and I can remember that was back in wait a minute now. 1929, yeah. 1929. Really? As far back as that? How old right. were you then? I was just a kid. <laughs> I was just a kid. Excuse me. <laughs> I was 11. I was Were 11. you really? Well, don't yeah. say that because we can figure from there. You I know. don't care. I'm proud oh, that I've lived this long. You're a smart girl, that's I'm right. I'm proud I lived yeah, this long. Continue. Absolutely. I'm just you every day. Everybody knows how bigly how old everybody is. Why but should today, you today it? women don't want to be called girls. They want to be called ladies. I once was reprimanded for saying you're a good-looking girl to somebody. Oh, and that's wow. very upsetting that's to me. That's very foolish. Isn't Isn't it? Person? I, I agree with you, no, Dorothy. No, that's Why do you take her side well, on? I have to take her side. <laughs> You're right <laughs> next to me. I can belt I, I, I have nothing further to say. Uh, that'll be the day. Uh, here we go back to Fred D. Rowe. He is being given a birthday party by his associates in City Hall. In fact, that was his office, which is now your my office. Is now my you office. have usurped the office established by Ziba C. Keith, that Ziba the, was the first, first, mayor. first mayor of Brockton. And he would be very upset to see someone like you established in his office. I tell that to Hastings. Hastings is, uh, I, I don't Hastings. Hastings is my friend, and he never comes to Brockton that, he doesn't, come, Keith, yeah. Hastings, that yeah. he doesn't come in to see me. And that would have been his great-grandfather, Ziba. Yeah, is that so? As, as I look at that picture of Fred Rowe, I see directly behind him for, uh, Fred Humphrey, who was a city marshal, yeah. uh, in the days in the days when they didn't Rowe was chief. mayor, we didn't have chiefs. chiefs we no. had city marshal. Mm -hmm. My father was the best man at Fred Humphrey's wedding. Now to mm -hmm. tell you how the changes go in the history of Brockton, Fred my, Fred Humphrey and my father were the only two lieutenants in the city in the city at the time. Yeah. And when he, uh, Humphrey became mayor, my father was the only police lieutenant. In the city, and how oh. many we have today? Oh, well, we God. have a lot of them. And I, today. Look, I look and I see Leo Clancy there uh, directly behind yes. him, who was the city treasurer. And who else we have? Well, we have that. Oh, now. That the young lady, sad. the young lady uh, on the left, just left of the mayor, is Mary Miltenis, who is now Mrs. Thomas Gentile. And oh, on the left right. of her is Pearl Stone. Pearl right? and Pearl was a, there's a grand, uh, there's one of the grand ladies of Brockton today, exactly. Pearl yes, Stone. Yes, she is. And also, wasn't uh, Mr. Clancy the father of Mrs. Noonan, the president yeah, Mrs. Noonan? Uh, the elder. No, uh, they, were, he, they were brothers. Oh, they were brothers. Uh, oh, the, uh, yeah. Leo Clancy was a uh, brother to Mrs. Noonan, to whom you refer. Oh, oh, and their right. father ran for Congress way back when. Yeah, Andrew Clancy yeah. was an old political figure right, in Brockton. Right. Well, we'll uh, go on because yes, I am always on. worried about the time. Well, Dorothy go. never worries. Keep, keep going. Never worry about the going, time. Just well, keep going. Just keep going. We have we to keep consider going. things in the uh, in the real programs on television. Everything is well. Like, let, let me assure you, Stanley. Yes, this if, is not if, a real if the, no, 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 not yeah. that. If if it happens that we don't get through, we'll just have another continuation. Oh, good night. How could you stand uh, the well, two go. of us again? Go. <laughs> uh, we're back to. Uh, Another time, this was when Harry Truman visited Brockton the first time in 1948, J.J. Yes, that's when I was in high school. Yeah, well, I, I remember that very well also. Did you attend this? I remember this very well. All right. Well, anyway, he's not trying to hit someone with that Harry shoe. Uh, <laughs> if you bring the, uh, bring the picture down a little more, we can see the others in there. That's uh, on the left is Joe Tom Downey. McCann. Tom, Tom McCann was a member of the Democratic State Committee. State Committee. He, a good friend of mine. He's the man I defeated for the position of the Democratic State Committee. What a sad state. <laughs> but anyway... <laughs> <laughs> oh, Tom was a great guy. Yeah, anyway, on the right is uh, Joe Downey, who was one of Brockton's most popular mayors. Uh, he wasn't well educated in the sense that uh, the uh, city clerk is. He didn't go to college. He was everybody's friend. Neither did I go to college. But he at any rate, at any rate, Joe was everybody's friend. Yes, he he, was. He'd reach in his pocket yeah. and give his last dime to young kids. Yeah. That, uh, yeah. And uh, he always <laughs> he wasn't good at speech making, and he'd occasionally give a lecture in which he'd say, "This splendid city." 
Every, and this splendid young man, he, the word splendid was he, the <laughs> one of the big ones his in his word. vocabulary. Joe had uh. the Taunton Lumber team. That's how he became so popular. He was the coach yeah. of the baseball oh. team. Oh, and, he was right. and there was yeah. never a young fellow that went off to the service that Joe didn't have his picture taken with. Oh, and yeah. it was great. All, when all in the fact, kids were going in the draft, they all came he, to the front of City Hall. That's it. And, uh, well, I have a lot of those draft pictures. Yes. You weren't drafted. And Joe, no, yeah, and how Joe, did you get in the and Marine? Joe, and Joe died as <laughs> mayor. The, Joe died as mayor of the city of Brockton. Oh, yes. Yes, he yes, did. He yeah. did. He died and there was the biggest, the biggest, biggest funeral, funeral, one of the yes. biggest funerals yes. I've ever seen. Yes. How did you get in the, were you drafted? I was drafted in. Were you yeah, really? I was. I was into the Marines? In the, into the Marines, right. I never knew they took yes. people in the Marines by draft. No, they, they knew they had something good. I, they, they knew they had something good when they found I me. I was going to be uh, drafted, but I, d I decided to enlist instead to escape that uh, oh, stigma no, I had, of being I, I tell drafted. you, I was very proud to have been in the Marines. Well, of course. And I was proud to be in the Army for four years, but we won't go into that. We'll get back to Joe Downey, and here he is with uh, Frank Kelly. Frank Kelly, the lieutenant governor, was he? He was either to... lieutenant governor or attorney general. Frank yeah. Kelly held, he yeah. was the father of the sweepstakes, if you remember. Frank Kelly, the mm. sweep was known as Sweepstakes Kelly, mm. and was father, he, was, he held the office of lieutenant governor and of attorney general. He had to be uh, attorney general then because directly behind him was Jeff Sullivan, who was the lieutenant governor. Mm-hmm. Well, uh, anyway, uh, the peop notice that in back of them, on the balcony, there's a tremendous number of people. Now today, can you imagine the President of the United States speaking with people on a balcony in back? They could take a perfect aim if they... Where was uh, this? Up on... Uh, Legion, Legion Parkway, Park, at the, the head of cannon. Legion Park. That's yeah, it, the, the old, old cannon. Legion. And old old you know this, that famous story about Harry Truman. Yes. What, what do you mean, yes? Do you know it? Uh, well, what story? There are many well, famous <laughs> stories about Harry Truman. Well, in Brockton, after Truman, after Truman left the city, he uh, was the, in a procession which proceeded along Belmont Street, and uh, there were sirens and a lot of police cars and so on. They went on Belmont Street towards Tanton, which was his next stop. Mm -hmm. And uh, everything was fine until all of a sudden the procession came to a complete halt. The sirens stopped. And Harry Truman stood up in the car, in his car, and bowed to the people to the left and to the right. And then, very gallantly and very dignified, as he always was, he's always a good dresser like oh, you he, were, he was, a, he was a haberdasher. haberdasher. He was a haberdasher. Right. haberdasher. Well, you always were very, in fact, I wore this suit today because I didn't want to have you upstaging me on this <laughs> thing. But anyway, getting back to the story, um, Truman stood up in the car and then very nicely walked into a gas station uh, next, right along on the on the corner of the street there. To use and, the facilities. Well, I didn't. He didn't say that at the time. But anyway, he went in there, and then three or four minutes later, he came out and went got in the car, and the siren started again, and they proceeded on, and for a long time there was a sign in that gas station in the, one of the rooms there that said <laughs> Harry Truman stopped here, except it didn't use the word stopped. <laughs> So that was the Shell gas station directly opposite the Shaw Market. Yes, the it, exactly. And that sign stayed there for a long I time. I thought it was still there. No, no. I went in there today to, <laughs> it, to find out, and it's gone completely. It's, it's too bad, too. That would have been a nice sign to have, to even to have the sign. I well, what someone may have taken it as a souvenir, right. after all. You don't <laughs> see that everywhere. It's like George Washington slept here. But getting on to, now here we have another picture of Joe Downey. I'm, I'm sorry, these are glossy. They do, uh, this, they do reflect. How can we get, there we yeah, are. Yeah, he did a good There job. we are. Now anyway, uh, on this one we have Joe Downey. Albert Sullivan. And J. Albert Sullivan, who was your predecessor a long time ago. Yes. And on the left is Harold E. Cole, who was dean of the city he council. He was the councilor from Ward 1. And on the right is, is Tom, Tom Mullins, Mullins, who was the interim. He succeeded. Are we saying this in duet? He something? succeeded to the office of mayor when Joe Downey died. He was the president of the city council. That's and right. Upon uh, that's, Downey's death, he ascended to the office. That's a good picture of Joe that's a, Downey there. That's a good there. picture of all of them. Harold Cole was the mover. Yeah, Harold Cole was the mover. Ward yeah, and he one. was a mover. Councilor from Ward 1. Yeah. And I think but, Tommy Mullins was a collector Jay for the... But Albert Sullivan was a very dignified. City Something clerk. like myself. No, no, no. He was much more <laughs> dignified than yourself. Uh, in fact, uh, uh, J. Uh, Albert, there's one thing different about J. Albert New. He never liked to perform weddings. He, uh, he, would, he, 
he tried to discourage anyone who wanted him because he was a notary public, as you a were. A justice of the peace. Just, excuse me. A, just, the, 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 the a notary public can't perform. No, a notary wedding. public cannot perform. Well, he was a justice of the peace <laughs> anyway. And the fact is that he disliked very much to perform weddings, and he said to anyone who was a prospective, uh, were prospective newlyweds, he said, uh, I, I just don't want to, why don't you have a clergyman do it? And in that way, he differs quite a bit from you. I take myself sometimes as being like, very similar to a clergyman, and well, I'm very... How many, how many weddings have you performed? Um, thousands. Honestly, oh, really? Thousands. Uh, many I, of them quite successful, most I imagine. Most of them quite successful, yeah. but I... That's do, because of your being, uh, you know, having a hand in it Remember somehow. this, you're making people happy, and I enjoy making people happy. Mm. That's fine, you're doing a and good job And the Justice of the today. Peace is kind of under a special dispensation to be yeah, sort of yeah, like a clergy for yeah, a moment. For a moment is right. Right, yeah. right. Here we're going to that terrible tragedy in Brockton, the, uh, the, the Strand, Strand Theatre Fair, oh, which was yeah. 50 years ago this March. March the 10th. Yeah, and here we have mm. a view of the balcony mm. where the roof collapsed yeah, on 13 uh, firefighters right. who were up there and were actually waiting for a hose to be brought up. Right. And I did a, a whole series for Continental Cable with Barry Allen uh, a mm -hmm. while back. Uh, together uh, on, with other survivors the, of, the, yes. of, the the, of the Strand Theater. Right. But nobody realized the extent of the fire in that building, not even the firefighters, because it was mainly smoke. Mm. And actually, the fire was in the eaves way, way up and caused the girders to melt yeah, yeah, and, and caused and the and roof and to the collapse. And the extent happened. of the collapse was tremendous, as you can see. Uh. This is how much actually came down on those men. And I had been talking with them about five minutes before this collapse, and uh, someone yelled and said, look, the fire's, look at, up in the eaves on the outside, there's a big fire there. I went outside, and just th at that time, the roof collapsed. The good Lord was looking after you then, Stanley. Uh, thank you. Well, I remember that fire. I lived at the corner of Bartlett and Chester Avenue, and I could yeah. hear the bells when they rang the other alarm, and yeah. I, you could smell the smoke. How, mm. how old were you then? I would have been 10 years old, oh. tw maybe 12. Mm. You're, growing. You're, about growing, 12. you're growing up. And I'll have to tell you that mm -hmm. I, have, I have hired two of the girls whose fathers were killed yes. in the Strand. The Mitchell, the Mitchell girls? No. The, no. the uh, McNeil girl, her name oh, there yes. was... Uh -huh. uh, Duggan, she worked for me in the city clerk's mm -hmm. office, and the Sullivan girl, whose name was Sites, worked in my registrar mm -hmm. voter's office. Now, the Mitchell girl, uh, family, the family lived, lived on Lawn Street. Yeah, well, the son. That's It'd right. Be the, the, son, son. the son is a fireman. Yeah, but the father was killed. Yeah, his father and, the was, uncle, and the I uncle. Uh, yeah, and uncle. then you had the Carol, who was mm -hmm. over the east side fire yes, station. His yes. son was a school teacher. Mm -hmm. yeah. And uh, uh, mm -hmm. Dr. Murphy is the, was mm -hmm. the yes, son of, mm -hmm. of one Dr. of Dr. Murphy, that's right, Dr. Mm -hmm. Murphy. Is, mm -hmm. So that, uh, yeah. But Brockton looked different in the old days. In fact, uh, it's hard to believe where there aren't many people in the streets today that they were as crowded as they are here in this case. And that was the way it was. You, you just couldn't walk along the sidewalk. Today you can walk along the sidewalk without mm -hmm. interference. It's been a long time since we've had that type of foot traffic, or pedestrian yeah. traffic in Brockton. That's right. That must well. have been when Rom first moved onto that corner. Yes. Because mm -hmm. that was uh, Woolworth prior to That's Rom right. moving there. Yeah. And the Bailey Stationers were down on Center Street when they moved up here. Yeah. And they moved back up onto West Elm Street. Uh, Roms well, my, is a jeweler. Roms is a jeweler. Mm -hmm. Roms is sure. a jeweler. My sister, uh, Miss uh, Beatrice, who was now a Mrs. Harry Sherman, used to work as a young lady in Woolworths at the time. I remember Woolworths being there. And uh, this was how it was at night. So you see, there, there's, oh, that's quite pretty. an elaborate. Pretty. Yes, Brockton it was. was a great city. Yes. It can come back. It yes. can come back. Yeah, absolutely. And I look, yeah. I look to the day when it will be. In fact, it's bound to when, the, and the, when these people who are now, uh, uh, shall we say, uh, underprivileged, when they get their feet, when they get in the American way, they're going to be entrepreneurs and things are going to come back. You mm. must remember, Stanley, we were the underprivileged back in Absolutely. those days. Absolutely. Too many of them forget that. Yeah. The I Irish, the Italians, the French, the Jews, the uh, Lithuanians, the Swedes, but, we were looked upon uh, as the minority. But see, the problem was you had pride. Absolutely. And you would not go to welfare oh, no, unless it welfare was... Welfare has, uh, has done an awful just, lot of damage uh, to us. go to the poor farm, and there was one poor farm. The poor farm right. was now, the, now the, the, the convent. convent. That's I remember right. the poor yeah. farm. Yeah. That's yeah. right. Yeah. And the piggery. The piggery was and they, the sooner they could get out of that poor farm, the oh, better absolutely. they liked it. They wanted to. They it wanted was to. very uh -huh. humiliating the trouble, to them. the trouble with public housing today, we have third and fourth generation living in there. They don't want to get out. They've got to have a little bit of incentive. Well, they have children so they can have another check, and it's, it's, it's sad. Wrong. Well, well that's all right. Just calm down, Jay. Uh, here we have... <laughs> 
Here we have another view of a, a great man, another view of Harry Truman, when he came to Brooklyn a second time in 1952. And he came, and here, this I think is rather a classic picture because we have him in a parade with Chief John F. O'Connell on the left and may I see Gerald Lucy on the right and behind them is John F. Kennedy who was a senator at that time and may soon was to become president after that. So there's actually two presidents in there. And at that time, Harry Truman uh, again addressed the group and uh, there is C. Gerald Lucy. If you move the camera, move it over to this part over here a little more. No, to the other side. Well, Jimmy that's Lawton it. is there. That's uh, Judge oh, yeah. James R. Lawton. I think he was a representative He was, he was probably time. serving his first term. As a matter of fact, he served in the double district, the yeah. old uh, double district. Uh, yeah. Gerald Lucy served there as a representative. And, Joe Downey served there. Yeah, and he has come, uh, gone a long ways. Uh, to probate. become a judge of probate mm -hmm. and he lived also on Portland the Portland Street. The yeah, and his family. Yeah. yeah. Well, his father and mother. He was an orphan at an early age. Oh, I think, he was. Yeah, because I his father. Well, they lived on they Summer Street. Went, yeah, oh, they did. But it. didn't they live on Portland at one time? Well, or was that the other family? No, I don't think they no. lived on Summer mm -hmm. Street. Okay. Them. And when, at any rate, um, and, J and Judge Lawton is now chairman of the board of the New England School of Law, and he's done a great job in bringing that institution up. Mm -hmm. That used to be Portia Law School in the old days for women only. Truly Yacobone has graduated from Portia. Is that so? There, this this is an example of how Harry Truman uh, stood up in the car. That's uh, how he was. Can you imagine a president today standing up in an open car and waving to the people? He'd be a perfect target for some of these, uh, mm -hmm. I was going to say weirdos. Crazies, but, uh, the crazies. Yeah. But, you know, one of the things, Jay, is that they're, and Dorothy, they're trying to get this uh, commuter rail back into Brockton. Yes. But long ago, in 1952, uh, Representative Arthur Sheehan uh, was one of those instrumental in trying to get in the state, state house authorization for a train bus. This is oh. an actual bus on rails. Oh, yes. And, and uh, if it's you It's too bad he didn't follow through on that. Because that's really going to be the salvation of the south, this part of yes, the yes, state, uh, the southeastern south south Massachusetts, yeah, yeah. and particularly Brockton. We need mass transportation. But there are yeah. bureaucrats. Do you know what a bureaucrat is? Uh, well, would you define one? For no, me? I can't. I'm not good at that. I never went to college like you did. Would that's you define one for me? No, no. Have you had any dealings with any of <laughs> we them? We run into too many. Oh, you do, really? We run into too many bureaucrats. Well, how do you handle them? You should be good at handling them. We don't have too much trouble. He does. He. Uh, does very does well. It? Oh, <laughs> I <laughs> understand. One of your boosters <laughs> over there. And of course, not, no mention of Brockton would be any good without uh, a picture of Rocky. Unfortunately, this is somewhat prophetic. He's waving from a plane, and he was killed in oh, a plane crash, in a private plane that crash. That's sad. And well, Rocky did more to put the Brockton on the map, than even in the oh. shoe industry. If you have been at all attentive, you have seen a complete hour of Dorothy and I talking about Rocky. The Rocky you, Bassino you legend. That, yeah. uh, no, I haven't seen that. Your, your education has been neglected. But Rocky did more for Brocky did, he did. More for Brock in the, even than the shoe industry. Of course, and because he, he is Brockton. Brockton. He did. He, and Brockton. he always remembered oh, Brockton, no matter where he was. I always remembered that. I thought that was wonderful. Yeah. Uh, I'm sorry, I have some of these uh, glossy pictures here. Well, that's, that's all right. We, we is don't it okay? Mind. Yeah, but they reflect. They, that no, isn't good. Our, our cameraman uh, Bob Ritchie is doing a job. He's doing a job. wonderful job. Mm -hmm. uh, this is Leverett Saltonstall at the Brockton Enterprise uh, trying out a new linotype. Now, a linotype is the typesetting machine that was used in those days. Today, there's nothing like that. Everything is computerized. On the left and back is attorney Ed Stevens, who wanted to become a judge. He finally became a judge, and he died, died that uh, same day. Al oh, almost. Uh, never was sworn in. No. And behind yeah. him is another former mayor, Yama Peterson. Yeah, mm -hmm. Yama. Mm -hmm. And then we have uh, Representative Adolph, Adolph Johnson. Johnson. from the Campello section of Brockton. That's correct. And we have uh, Ken Dalton. Ken Dalton, who was a, a writer for the Enterprise. And the other one is Joseph A. Messier, yeah. who was news editor of the Enterprise. And kneeling is Ralph Johnson, Sr., I don't know if you know Ralph Jr., who's I about, do know Ralph Jr., yeah, who was his son. But now the most important picture of the af of the evening, or when, oh, is it afternoon? afternoon. Well, it may, yeah. this may go on in the evening. Well, in fact, it, it does. I'm watching so my time. That way. <laughs> this is J.J. Lyons when he was young with his father, Captain Lyons. And uh, you can see that he did have quite a different uh, appearance then. Well, that picture was taken yeah. in the Yankee Stadium That's at Rocky's right. fight when he fought... Exactly. Uh, 
Let's see, Archie Moore. Yeah. And Can I? that was what, in 1955? 55, 55, I think. 55, It I was one of the later fights. You must However, have been handsome in your he green was, uniform. He was, but in his uniform. Now, what do you I mean, have must some. have been? <laughs> <laughs> the point is this, Jay. We have pictures of you in your marine uniform, but of the 10,000 pictures a year, how can I gather in this short time? No, you can't. It would, uh, take, it would take you weeks. Not, not but you are that, distinguished but now. It would, it would That's with, a with, the, with the gray hair. He yes. thinks he's distinguished. But yeah. anyway, let's go on to the next <laughs> next one. This is uh, Nixon, uh, President Nixon, when he came to Brockton as a vice president, and with him is Yelma Peterson, who was mayor at that time. I'm going to go on these because I detect that time is, is going well, on. Well, it's moving along. Is it really? Yes. I, what the, no. I didn't think we had uh, that 15. much. Fifteen minutes? Yeah. Remarkable. Yeah. Anyway, this is uh, Henry Cabot Lodge, who later became uh, a... Uh, the United States nice, Ambassador and, and Louis Holman. Also, yeah, United States Ambassador, and also wasn't he yeah, in the United Nations? He was the United Nations Ambassador. Yeah. He was nominated for Vice President. Yeah, oh. and with him in the center is Louis Holman, who was Chairman of the Board, and on the right is uh, Ted Childs, Theater F. Childs, who was Brockton a Hospital. Brockton Hospital yeah. Superintendent. Right and his me. wife is still living on the Cape and a very gracious lady. Oh. She's very nice. Yeah. Unfortunately, he died, and so did Louis Holm. In fact, they're all dead. That's, that's the sad thing about these programs, you know. Well, when you go back that but, far. Uh, it's wonderful it's to have great, memories. It's great that people can have memories, those memories. Memories, right. They are recorded. This right. is why Stanley's pictures really uh, uh, are going to be great. And, and when they are over the stone hill, when we're all long oh, gone, people will be wonderful. able to recollect what happened right. in Brockton. Right. Who, Right. Your camera. Right. Thank you. Aren't you? Oh, well, you've now, done, no, you've done it's about a time job. Uh, you gave me a little uh, <laughs> boost there. <and> stuff. <laughs> anyway, positive, positive. Anyway, yeah, anyway, this is the old Brockton police station where JJ's father. That uh, officer Patrud was the chief's office. Yeah, exactly. And, uh, again, and if you look across the street there, now that again, it couldn't have been all that long ago because that's the Grand Army Park and the Grand Army Hall sure. uh, stood sure. there where... I have some pictures of it being demolished here. As a matter here. of fact, up there where the awnings were, that was the part of the chief's office. My father's office was down next to yeah. that. Yeah. And way in back was the... Uh, you remember Mrs. Devine? Uh, Alice Devine. Alice Devine. I, I knew Devine. Alice Devine very well. And Mrs. Gee. Armitage. Do you remember oh, Mrs. Armitage? Mrs. Armitage. Well, I could tell you a story about her, but Mrs. I, bet, and Pearl I better Hammer. not do that. Well, Pearl Hammer. <laughs> that, that, that's going back a long time. <laughs> There's a terrible story about Mrs. Armitage, which I shouldn't tell you on the air. But anyway, she, they, it was April Fool's Day, and the, uh, the officers wanted to play a little joke on uh, Mrs. Armitage. And they told her to call this number, but there was a, a box for her. Uh, a package, you know, for her. So she called uh, the number and she said, this is Mrs. Armitage. She was Brockton's only policewoman at that In time. And uh, the, uh, she says, have you a box for me? She says, they said, no, this is the funeral home. Oh, oh, <laughs> I don't know that she was oh, a policewoman. I think she was a oh, maid. Oh, no, no, she was the police. Was Mrs. Police M. Josephine Armitage was a the uh, Brockton's only police I thought woman. Pearl Hammer was the first one. No, no, she, Pearl came after her. I know she came after her. You're getting your uh, dates mixed there, uh, Jane. Right. Oh, the poor lady. Was she Well, of course. Well, she. Well, uh, the point is that she took her uh, office very seriously. I know. And yeah, they I, uh, took yeah. advantage of her. Uh, Today, I, I, that would be kind of, called harassment, you I, know, I, yes, of the uh, highest type, and the uh, officers uh, would be uh, called to uh, <laughs> task. to task, and they'd be tried and convicted and uh, I know. hoss whipped. Uh, maybe they didn't do it. Maybe it was somebody outside that didn't like her. No, no, no. That's when East Elm Street in the downtown was quite an area. Oh, yeah. Anyway, yeah, I'm, I shouldn't be telling those stories about people who aren't alive today. This is ex-Mayor William. This goes so far back that uh, J.J. I don't J. remember. This is the only mean, I don't remember. This is too, too young. J. Yeah. This is uh, Bert Bullivant, William A. Bullivant, oh, who was William mayor in 1922, I think. And the yeah. reason I had that picture is because he was a night editor on the Enterprise. He was a newspaper man before right. that. And he was a very fine gentleman, but working nights, he was very upset. And when the phone would ring, he'd yell at the phone, what the heck do you want, he'd say. <laughs> <laughs> and, and every damn time before he took up the uh, phone. But when I was in the service, I went to uh, Fort Getty, uh, when I first, the 243rd Coast Artillery. And they use these little three-inch guns. I don't know how the heck they expected to do anything, uh, do anything with them. It's a far cry from what happened. But a gentleman who was there was a fellow named James Burke. And he also was a private in the Army, as I was at that time. And uh, subsequently, he became very active in uh, politics. 
and was elected a congressman, and that was Congressman James Burke. When he, afterwards, he came to Brockton one time, he says, I want a picture of the two of us together because we both were in the Army together. And this is how it was when, of course, he is no longer living. I, they're both famous men, and Jim Burke went on to Congress, and Stanley went on to become a millionaire. Yeah. <laughs> Stanley, you know, has done exceptionally well. He's, I, worked, he's worked hard and deserves a lot of credit right, for all right, he's done. Right. But of the two, I think that uh, Stanley has done the better of the two. I, I think that I, I'm trying to find a good response to him, because he, that's a, a pure exaggeration. Uh, and, I should say a multi-millionaire. No, no, we, we, no. we, know, we know that Stanley has done remarkably you, well, I am and he's invested wisely, now, and just we're glad for him. I am now going to sever <laughs> diplomatic relations with you as of this oh, moment. Well, Don't you uh, think please, I, what, please, you please no, not on this not show. Not on your show, darling. But no what way. I was going to well, say, if friends can say things and get away with them, yeah. and you forgive it. But I'm, and, very, uh, I'm not a forgiving type, you know. I'm, I bear this as a grudge. He's, well, he's very humble. I, <laughs> Everybody to know <laughs> how many millions he's made. Uh, uh, I, I think I, you should I just relax, Stanley, so? and accept uh, his, his uh, judgment. And certainly, he's done this all through and hard just work. say, uh, "Look, I've worked very hard. Whatever I've accumulated is mine. That's Whatever exactly. I have accumulated is mine." <laughs> One thousandth of what he has said. Don't pay. <laughs> Are we going to go on with this show here? Wait, wait, wow. Continue, please. This is not supposed to be a comedy, you know. Well, <laughs> I'll tell you, I, think, I, I, I think the audience at home must be uh, having a wonderful time. Is that so? Please I think continue. they must have turned us off long ago. <laughs> they won't. They won't. They How do you know? the Internal Revenue is watching. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> That's all you have to say. My may ne I, my may ne I leave now, Dorothy? My next show will be on I, the Brockton Police Department I, taking uh, you Yes. I, as a matter of fact, I think that uh, I should uh, renege. I, I'm, You're yeah, doing yeah. well, I'm Mr. Emo Bob. I'm emotionally upset by the whole thing. Anyway, we're going back to the, uh, to the business at hand, which is... Um, Other famous people. Yes, thank you. Roger Keith, who was one of Brockton's prominent mayors, and we have uh, Mayor Ellishaw on the right, Lenny Ellishaw was a mayor under the Plan D form of government. He was never elected mayor. He was elected to the city council, and the council in those days elected the chairman. Uh, they mayor. elected the uh, one of their uh, body as the mayor. Oh, we had that oh. for four years, and uh, Lenny oh. Ellishaw was what we would call an honorary figure. He was a member of the city council with the title of mayor for one year. Mm -hmm. But see. Roger Keith was one of the distinguished mayors of the city of Brockton. Yes, he was, and he yeah, always he came back. And he and, uh, and he J. Said, Albert Sullivan used to get together on election he night. He was always there on election night. He was always in the city clerk's office on election night, and he did the reading. But then mm -hmm. there was uh, Mayor J. F. Melton McGrath. He was a haberdasher like... Uh, he, wor he, was, uh, he, he worked, worked in, in Edgar's... Uh, Edgar's department. Uh, Edgar's, uh, he was a great minstrel man, if you remember those yeah. days. It was a musician, Melton yeah. McGrath. Well, he mm -hmm. ran for mayor a second time, and he didn't make it. And he's being congratulated by the one who did... Uh, uh, Milty served one term as mayor after the Plan D form of government. Yeah. He came back after the Plan no. D. Then Jack Sims defeated him when he ran for re-election the right. second mm -hmm. term. Mm -hmm. at, the le at the left, is you got to differentiate who's Jack Sims. Is Alvin Jack Sims. Alvin Sims. Jack Sims is still He's a, a prominent still, attorney. Very prominent attorney in Brockton. And he has... Today, with offices down on Main Street. He just opened new offices in the old Barristers Hall. That's building. correct. Oh, uh, yeah, so, that's and nice. here he is with his family. Uh, the gentleman, uh, in the, this one is William Sims, who is, his, who is currently an attorney in his own office. Oh, Dorothy, right. let me tell you a little story about his wife, Pearl. Uh, I, as you mentioned earlier, belonged to the Ancient Honorable Artillery Company, and we were over in Korea in Japan, and we were coming back via Hong Kong. I was having a suit made in the Peninsula Hotel, and I met a gentleman from Connecticut. He's he the said, guy who wasn't very you're wealthy. From, he travels all over the world. You're from Brockton, he said. By any chance, would you know Jack Sims or Pearl Sims? Pearl Sims was the matron of honor at my wife's wedding. There. Yeah, I mean, this is a small world. This happened yeah. in Hong Kong. Yeah, there you are. Yes. It How is How many a small times world. have you been to Hong Kong? I've only been to Hong Kong once. Yes, but he's an international traveler. Yes, I understand that. And you can't do that, that without money. So he must, I stay at home. I haven't gone anywhere to speak of. Well, well perhaps you're subsidizing his trips. You know, he's <laughs> nice if he, I told him, he'd leave me the, only the interest on his money. I will never forget him. <laughs> 
Oh, you always have to have the last word, and I don't uh, think that's right. right. <laughs> Remember that. Stanley, I wish I could. we well, have five, you, five minutes. Five minutes. Well, we can't use it in this uh, back and forth uh, you, time. You're, how many pictures have you 110. Oh, no, actually, well, no, we'll no. Come, no. We'll come back. I'm only, I'm only halfway through. Well, we'll just have to have but a continuation. Ten, no, no, no. Oh, Good yes. Night. They oh, won't yes. stand it. Oh, oh, they will. This is they getting will. to be like a comedy. Uh, Mr. Noonan so. called me, the elderly Mr. Noonan, and he saw it in Easton, and he thinks they're wonderful, and he's looking forward so to this one. Easton. This These shows. Is that so? Yes. Well, you I'm have other shows besides this. You no, don't no, this lying. is what he's talking about, something different they're, they're with Stanley. In what you have That's the right, the history That's of people are very interesting. They are, they're really. going to get an entirely different view of me after what happened between the two of us. You, what know? you mean people didn't know you as well, quite as wealthy as you? <laughs> Dorothy is a wealthy person. Eighty acres of land in Maine. I, and Dorothy I'm, has her horses. I do. Yes. yes. Dorothy I do. is a remarkable lady. Well, she, we have a lot of fun. Be more grand dames like Dorothy. Could, well, if this were I, England, she would be Dame Dorothy Dar Benner. Oh, that's just like knighthood. Well, we yes, might it is knighthood. Oh, they, okay. The <laughs> Knight of Brockton. <laughs> yes, as long as I'm not one of the ladies, ladies of the night. <laughs> ladies don't like to be called dames, though. You say and that. Stanley dame knew the ladies of the uh, night. Oh, I did not. <laughs> Uh, that that is sheer. That's that's a uh, what do you call that? Uh, oh, libel. Oh, libel. Oh, this is up there opposite the field. Uh, D.W. Field. No, no, uh, no. Eldon B. Eldon Keith, B. Field. Keith. This is the first high rise in Brockton. Oh, the being, the uh, being, uh, Manning erected. Towers. Yeah. That was the old, on the site of the old Goddard Hospital. Exactly. Yeah. This I'm is glad we're back to something a little less. Uh, well, Connor Goddard. Well, Road. this was expansion of Brockton. Yeah. Actually, I mean, this really. Is one of the big mistakes that took place. In <laughs> really? Had the high school stayed down there, had they gone yes, along yes. and put the high school where that building was, the continue yeah, that, that continue whole area, that, that we would have we yeah. saved the downtown. But that's history, and yeah. we can't worry about no. what's happened right. in the past. Can't Since go you know backwards. So much about the high school. This is how the high school looked from the air. Oh, this picture sure. was taken by Joe Marcus, who was my associate for the past 30 years. He's a great guy. Yeah, yeah. He's very good, and he. Uh, of course, that's the old A building. The old A building is on the left. You went to school there, yeah, and both of them. So did I on the that right. That building should never have been demolished. All right, the headmaster, here. The headmaster's office in there had mahogany wainscoting. Yeah. We had the seals of the city all over the building. Oh, the and building. we had a lot of. There were a lot of statues of Greek Greek gods, Greek gods and, and Greek authors. Uh, and, and they were dumped. They were imitations, of course, of the, the real plaster, thing, but right. the plaster. But they were dumped ignominiously in a uh -huh. uh, in a uh -huh. landfill. Before anyone knew it, but this is—that's how the building was I'm just going before to it was destroyed. Right. What are you going I'm to interrupt us now? Yes, I am because I want to just be sure that I thank my camera crew. Uh, By Bob all means, Ritchie if they had to go Esther through this. Cobbett and uh, Bob Burns out back, who's running the controls, and I want to end on a note with you to whatever you wish to put up there, so that we can close out our. Um, program well, I think we ought to. Here's something that I might can't believe an hour would go by that quickly. Is, uh, is that wonderful? It's a most oh, interesting. Is, isn't it? Very, and and don't you think we should have a continuation? We'd be happy to. I know Mr. I, Mr. Not I, after what I went we through today. We would be very today. happy to. Not after I went through no, today. Well, well, well today. and J.J. Hey. supersedes you, you Does know, he because really? he's city clerk. We'd be happy well, to have you back. Well, you wanted to, thank you. I don't know if I'll be happy to have you back. Anyway, Dorothy, this, I think, is bringing things right up to date. These are two people who are trying very hard to bring Brock Brockton back. Right. One is, jo is Manthella George, who was a superintendent of schools. Yes. The other is Mayor Cal Patero. I might say this, too. Manthella George has breakfast at a certain place called Sandy's Lunch Counter, a lunch on Belmont Street every mm -hmm. morning, mm -hmm. or most every morning, and he always mentions your show. So he's one of your boosters, uh, and I hope yes. he sees this one too. But after he sees this, he might turn it off. No. I, I like the statement <laughs> under the picture, me. though. Brockton is the best. It can continue to be the best, and it will be. And let's hope that the best will be drug-free. I think yes, that is excellent, and I think that Mia Pataro has really tried very hard to uh, boost Brockton to make it a a place where people want to live, where people will have a fair shake, whether they're uh, whatever color, race, creed, and so forth. And I, I look back on my days in Brockton with great pleasure, and I also love um, thinking about this show, and we are going to have a continuation. There's just no two ways about it. So people of Brockton should be most grateful to you, Dorothy, for availing 
this time uh, to them. Having you and, on the program. And for <laughs> that's right. I can't understand. I thank you again so much. How many years were you city clerk? 20 years, dude. Oh, that's great. I've and been I hope around 20 long. more. He's been around a hell of a lot <laughs> Please, you can't swear on the air. Did you know that? Oh, well, uh, that, that is a vulgarism. That's right. Not that's that's right. Remember, now you have to stop. <laughs> we can't allow anything yeah, like that to I go on. No, but I, I do want to thank both of you so much for giving out of your busy time and staying your wonderful collection of pictures. Thank you so very much. Thank I, you I do hope that it will be something.